Hello everyone, my name is Nware, and this is X4 Foundation, specifically the new and improved small weapons guide featuring today the base faction weapons. The base factions are the Argon, the Talati, the Paranids, the HOP, the Ministry of Finance. I think that's about it. But so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be drawing numbers from the X4 Ultimate Weapons Guide. This is made by Kajar. Uh, same as last time, he has been compiling all of this information here. One thing that will be important today is the Muon Georgia. It's a specific type of weapon. We're going to explain that, but you'll notice how DPS and effective DPS are different. There is a reason for that. But as I said last time, he isn't being paid to do this. So if you like either his guide or you, if you found his guide or my guide to be useful in any way, shape or form to you, consider leaving a like and a word or just leaving him a comment telling him how it was useful for you. But all right, on to the graphs. So we have here first R is the Argon Ion Blaster. Alright, so the Ion Blaster is really something that you're going to be using when you really, really don't want enemy ships to have shields. This is very important. Now, you'll notice that it has really high sustained shield damage and burst shield damage, but it does pretty much nothing to haul, both in burst and sustain. It's actually so low, it's almost as bad against hull as the Paranid Burst Ray, as you can see down there. But, it is just that the Ion Blaster is a very specialized, very fast-moving, projectiled, uh, anti-shield weapon, and that's really its entire job. So, the thing is, it tends to get kind of expensive when you start using these in mass. So what you will want if you're going to use these is, first off, they're pretty much useless against fighters, against small ships. Because small ships usually don't have that much shields to really justify this over a more uh, universal type of weapon. However, against large ships and extra large ships, most large ships have like 1,600 shields. Most extra large ships will have somewhere between 300,000 shields and almost a million shields. I think an I has like 937,000 shields or something like that. So having ships that are dedicated to just stripping shields, especially if you are using a bunch of fighters to essentially swarm and then take down the ship very quickly, I think they have like... Uh, like almost a million shields, but I might, I might be thinking about hull instead of shields. Anyway, they got a lot. That's the important thing. So being able to strip those shields very quickly will allow you to then deal a lot more damage with your more specialized, say, anti-hull fighters that are maybe using blast mortars, which will be covering in a little bit. But the ion blasters, its attacks do move very quickly. And it does basically just fire constantly, as you saw, and it doesn't have a bad spread or anything. It's all pretty straight. So, all in all, it's a good weapon, but it's very expensive to get the Mark II version. The Mark I version is already kind of expensive, uh, kind of part intensive, if you will. But the Mark II version can just be outrageously expensive. But all right, with that, let's move on to the next weapon in our list. The HOP, or Ministry of Finance, Blast Mortar. Let me ask you a question. Do you not like enemy medium ships existing? Do you think that large ships should die in fire? How about extra large ships? Shooting them can be really fun, too. Well, the Blast Mortar is basically, you take the plasma cannon, and then you just jack it all, you just jack it full of like PCP and pure adrenaline and you ramp it up to 11 and you pretty much get the HOP blast mortar. <laughs> it's, it's projectiles go faster. It's accuracy is about the same and uh, it does more damage, a lot more damage. And uh, the only real downside is that it has slightly shorter range. That's it. So this is literally the best 
the most damaging, I should say, small weapon in the game, as far as I understand, at least overall. The Argon Ion Blaster beats it out, but as soon as the shields are gone, it's, you know, you're just sort of like tickling the enemy ship while nothing happens. So, this bad boy does a ton of damage. Now, keep in mind that when we're looking at the damage here, if you're looking at the ship overall, it's going to be the dark bars. Those are the sustained damage bars, and that's pretty much the same regardless of how many weapons you add. A ship, so, so to put that in perspective, a ship with one blast mortar does the exact same sustained damage as a ship with 50 blast mortars. The only difference is that the ship with 50 blast mortars will be 50 times, will have 50 times the burst damage of a ship with one blast mortar. The difference it really is that when the ship with one blast mortar needs to burn off heat, it will burn off very quickly, and the ship with 50 blast mortars, well, um, don't even bother. Just like burst, a, just like boost away, fly home, leave the game running for a week, and when you come back, it might be finished cooling down. Consequently, there are no ships with 50 bounce. <laughs> I think the most you got is like six. Six or so. So... The Blast Mortar, it does a lot of damage, it hits really hard, same rules apply, enemy fighters do tend to burst directly towards you, they do tend to fly straight at you while shooting, so you might be able to get a pot shot on them that way, but unless that specific case is going on, don't expect to hit fighters with this thing at all. It'll just be pure random chance if you do. <laughs> It'll be pure luck if you hit enemy fighters with this when they're flying around you instead of directly at you. Enemy Corvettes, you will hit them more a lot, more often, but you may also just miss. That depends on how close you are, because they are, well, enemy medium ship. Uh, because they're quite a bit larger, there is a higher chance to hit. And oh boy, you hit with four of these, like on Eclipse Vanguard or something, uh, it will do a lot of damage <laughs> to that enemy uh, medium ship. Large ships are where you're going to have, say, 20, 30, 40, say, Eclipse Vanguards or something. And you're just going to have them all set to bombard, to bombard, bombard, however you want to say it. And they're all going to just kill that large ship fairly quickly. But, yeah, it's really useful. To my knowledge, you can get this from the HOP, the Holy Order of the Pontifex, as well as the Ministry of Finance. You have to get both, you have to get either one of their factions up to 10 reputation, and then you can get a military license from them, at which point you can buy these. The order, uh, the Ministry of Finance is probably the easiest, because you only have to go up 10 instead of 25 points, and you can do that fairly quickly with just a small trader trading to the wharf or something like that. So. Very easy to get, and yeah, very easy to get. Uh, about the Ion Blaster, just a quick second. It's sold by the. It's sold at Argon Prime at the Wharf. I believe there are other places where you can get it as well. Someone has brought up some faction that I don't remember at the moment, but there are other wharfs that you can potentially get it from if you, for some reason, are enemies with the Argons and you want to use the and you want to use the Ion Blaster. All right, next up is the Burst Ray. Are those pesky turrets getting you down? Is the fact that large and extra large ships are able to actually use their engines? Oh, I know, I don't like that either. What about those big shield batteries that they've got? Oh, those are such a pain. Wouldn't it be nice if you had a super specialized weapon that would just destroy those things incredibly quickly? Like you fly up and start shooting and boom, dead. Well, that's basically what the Paranid Burst Ray does. It is a very, very specialized anti-module weapon. It has... No effect on the modules of small and medium ships, to my knowledge. I could be wrong, but I don't think it does. And it is basically what you will use to take out turrets in large and extra large ships. Because in extra, large and extra large, if you don't know, you can target the modules individually, whereas on small and medium ships, you cannot. 
So what this means, and also stations, you can take out turrets on stations very quickly with these as well. Now, this is a weapon that I would recommend for only the player. The AI can use it, but I have no idea how effective they would be with these things. So just keep that in mind. They will probably fly around trying to shoot fighters with them, and quite literally the fighters could probably just sit there, take it, completely ignore them, and shoot them with a beam emitter and kill them <laughs> and win the fight before even having their shields go down. So, so just keep that in mind. Uh, this is very much an anti-module weapon. Do not use it against fighters, if at all possible. All right, next up is the Paranid Mass Driver. Do you like sniper rifles? Do you like bolt action sniper rifles specifically that fire like a 50 cal or something? That's essentially what the Mass Driver is. So what it does is it is a gun that has absolutely no gimbling. So wherever you are pointing your ship is where the shots are going. Because it has no gimbling, it can't focus all its turrets, well, it can't focus all its guns on a single point. So when, however large your ship is, that's where all the shots are going. So keep that in mind, no gimbling whatsoever. It will be better to use this against ships that are larger than the ship you are firing this from. You will most likely use this against large and extra large ships to try and get a lot of burst damage in there. Now, you will see that it seems to do about equal burst and sustain damage. There's a very important reason for this. You see, when you fire the Mark I mass driver, it takes 20 seconds for it to cool down before you can fire it again. 20 seconds. So naturally, you don't want to put this on the player ship. Now, the Mark II, you get to fire it twice before you need to wait before you need to wait for it to cool down. But you get to fire it, and then it's a 10 second cooldown before you can fire it again. That's kind of what it is. So if you were to have a lot of ships that were set to bombard, and you, were and you wanted to go with small ships, and for some reason you didn't want to use the blast mortar, you wanted to use the mass drivers, you could very well put a bunch of mass drivers on a bunch of fighters, a bunch of small ships, and then have them do all that sweet, sweet burst damage. Now keep in mind, it does take the Mark I 20 seconds to recharge, and it takes the Mark II 10 seconds to recharge before it can fire again. And what that is going to boil down to is that when it hits, it's the Mark I is going to do 20 times as much damage, and the Mark II is going to do around 10-ish times as much damage. The Mark II will still do more damage overall, but just be aware, you're taking 10 to 20 seconds worth of burst damage, and you are compressing it into a single event. So, definitely extremely high burst damage. If So this hits for, I think, 1,500, put that in perspective. This means if you were to shoot most non-heavy small ships, with this, and three shots were to hit all at once, you would instantly kill them, because they typically have less than 4,500 health across shields and hull. So that's the main strength of it. It is definitely a weapon where you can burst people down. Again, no gimbling whatsoever, so you're unlikely to hit a single ship with three shots at all. You're unlikely to hit anything that's moving particularly fast with this as well. Just keep that in mind. This is more of a weapon that you would want to use against stations, if at all possible, because you are really bursting your damage into them and then, and then bugging out and running for your life. Because you really don't have the survivability in a fighter to, to survive that, ship, that, that uh, station's onslaught. But that is the Paranid Mass Driver. A lot of the other long cooldown weapons, that's what LCD means in this case, are going to be compared to the Mass Driver. They're very much similar. The Mass Driver, the Split, ver the split Variant, they both fire a projectile. The Terran Variant fires a beam, so it's hit scan. 
But all right, so that was the Parented Mass Driver. Let's move on to the Muon Charger. The Muon Charger is one of those interesting weapons because it's almost impossible, if legitimately impossible, for a human at least, to overload this thing to the point that you would actually have to wait to let it dissipate heat. That is the reason why its burst and sustain damage here are exactly the same. Now what this really boils down to is that because it can never overheat, its burst damage and sustain damage are the same. So this is one of those extremely rare guns in X4 where increasing the number of Muon chargers actually increases your effective sustain damage as well. Because the both, both are just equal all the time. And remember that the entire point of sustained damage versus burst damage is burst damage is firing until it overheats, and that's it. And sustained damage is firing until it overheats, and then letting it completely cool down. And that's sort of how that's measured, so that you could fire it again. Now, because both of those are the same, effectively, because it never overheats, we have what we have. So if you want something where you could literally just out damage everything because again you add if you have say it, it does less damage than the blast mortar right but the moment you add like three well two muon chargers you're already doing more sustained damage than than like five blast mortars so just keep that in mind it does have an effect where you have to charge it up i believe it's one or two seconds Let's see, what do we have here? By the Talati. And its charge time is one second. So yeah. So you have to wait for it to charge. You have to hold it down for one second, then you can fire. If you just tap it to fire it, all the shots will bounce out. All the, all the shots will hit the enemy ship and then bounce right off. If you have it fully charged, there is a 30% chance that a shot that hits the enemy ship will bounce off anyway. But the others will hit and then stick to the enemy ship's shields. I believe once the shields go down, I don't know if they actually just like attach themselves to the hull or not, but you would presumably be shooting the enemy ship repeatedly with these things, and that would cause the enemy ship to get all of this all over them. So again, because they do damage over time, this is one of those rare weapons where you can have pretty high DPS with them, and the other fact is when they fly past you, they are still taking damage over time from the little Muon Charger bits that hit them and stuck. And as a result of that, they're still taking damage. That is delaying their shield recharge as they come back around. And so when you come back around, even if you spent a lot of time away from them to where they couldn't hit you for some reason, um, your shields might start recharging, but theirs won't because they were still taking damage. So you're able to come back around and start shooting them more with the Moan Charger, which if you were to, and also because this literally does scale sustain damage wise and burst damage wise with number of slots, this is one of those very rare guns where taking say a split ship that has six weapon mounts and putting Moan Chargers on all of them would actually make that ship more effective than all the other weapons here, simply because of not being able to overload it. Uh, if it, of it needing to overheat. So, that's what we've got. The Moron Charger is very powerful in the hands of the AI, I find, in the hands of the player. If you can, if you can really master that charge, fire, charge, fire, charge, fire, to where you're only charging for a second and then firing, you can also get amazing results out of this. But if not, if you're charging it for very for far too long because there isn't a bar that tells you how the charging is going then it might be best to leave these only on say ai controlled ships so that they can try to maximize how much dps they're actually getting out of the muon charger but all right guys that's all we got for today i will catch you guys next time next time we're going to be going over these split weapons there aren't nearly as many as they are here but split weapons work 
pretty well. You will need split vendetta to access the split weapons. Uh, so just keep that in mind. All right, guys. I'll see you later. Bye, everyone.